Before You Were Born by Joan Laurie Nixon, illustrated by James McIlrath. Long before the rock shook and pushed upward to become mountains, God dreamed of you. And before the sun rolled hot into the deserts and the wind rushed cool into the valleys, God loved you. Even before the earth was created, God wanted you to be born. He dreamed of you. He loved you. He wanted you. When your life began, you were so small. No one knew you were there except God. Far away, the tiniest star shimmers in the black sky. No one can see it, but it's there. Deep, deep, a little fish glimmers in the dark waters of the ocean. No one can see it, but it's there. And snug as a secret, in the warmth of your mother's womb, you were there. A protective sack filled with water formed around you. Inside your sack, you were so tiny, so still, no one knew about you, except God. At the moment your life began, everything was there that would make you the special person you are. Already God knew whether you would be a boy or a girl, what color hair and eyes you would have, and how tall you would become. And at the center of this life was your soul, which was created with all the joy and glory of God's love because he wanted you. Your body was separate from your mother's body, but you needed her to help you grow. So a cord formed from your body to hers, and through that cord came the nourishment from her body to yours. In four weeks, you grew to be one fourth inch long, as curled as a swirl in a gleaming turban shell, you had a round head as big as half your body and a heart that beat with no more sound than a whisper. Your arms and legs were beginning to form and you had a mouth. By the end of your sixth week of life, your brain had developed enough to send out brain waves that showed it was living and active. And sometimes in the soft, warm cushion where you lived, you moved little quiet movements, not strong enough yet for your mother to feel. Your body was nourished by your mother's body and you grew. When you were two months old, you were not much more than one inch long, but you had a face with eyes, ears, and a nose. You had hands and feet and the fingers which were forming already had the fingerprints that would be yours and only yours for the rest of your life. By now your parents knew about you and shared this gladness. Yay! All your energies went into the job of growing. And at your third month of life inside the womb, you were three inches long. You had eyelids thinner than butterfly wings that stayed softly closed over your eyes and you had tiny fingernails and toenails. You could swallow and you moved more easily in your water-filled sack that grew larger as you grew larger. In another four weeks, you had doubled your size. At four months of life, your bones are stronger, and now for the first time, your mother might have felt you stretch out an arm and pull it back. You could kick your legs and turn your head. But when you rested, you curled comfortably in the dark warmth with your knees pulled up and your ankles crossed and your arms folded in front of your face. Your heart was strong enough for the doctor to hear it through his stethoscope when you were five months old. Maybe he asked your mother if she too would like to listen through the stethoscope to this tiny person growing inside her body. You are now about nine inches long and weighed almost 11 ounces. Long ago, your baby teeth had formed under your gums, and now your permanent teeth were forming. Soft hair was growing on your head. Getting bigger. Still you grew, and your water sack and the womb stretched and grew larger too. Sometimes your mother could feel you moving and pushing against the walls around you. And maybe you could sense her happiness as she knew you were there and loved you. You were a funny wrinkled baby at six months. <clears throat> the fat was just beginning to form under your loose skin and were a foot long and weighed a pound and a half. 
You had wispy eyebrows and eyelashes. You could open your eyes. In the soothing comfort of your own quiet world, you sucked your thumb. But when you hiccuped, you weren't quiet at all and your mother could feel you jumping and bumping inside her. She could feel you roll and turn even more strongly when you had li lived for seven months because you were now 14 inches long and your weight was two and a half pounds. All the organs of your body had developed into what they should be. But in the warmth of your protective growing place, you were still not quite strong enough, not quite ready to be born. You exercised in the womb, a busy, active baby. You were nourished and you grew plumper. You were helping in every way you could to be ready for your life after birth. You were eight months old now, longer and heavier and stronger. That's the baby. During the ninth month of your life before you were born, you grew to the length and weight you would have at birth. Maybe you were 19 inches long, maybe 22. You might have weighed six pounds, maybe nine, maybe somewhere in the middle. You were plump and your skin wasn't as wrinkled or red. The hair on your head was thicker and your eyelashes curled against your round cheeks. Now you were crowded in the water sack with your knees pulled up against your chest and your head bent down. It was hard for you to move as much as you had before. At some moment, your body and your mother's body knew it was time for you to be born and the walls of the womb squeezed against you. They pushed you head first through the passageway in your mother's body, out of your warm, wet, comfortable growing place. When you came into the world, it was suddenly bright and noisy and strange. You began to breathe and cry. Oh, the babies cry. Your motherly, your mother eagerly reached out her arms to hold you. Although this world was new to you, your mother's and the steadily beating heart were familiar and comforting. You could not take care of yourself now anymore than you could before you were born. But this did not worry you because your mother was there and your world of love was larger you felt the strong arms of your father and with your fuzzy new eyesight saw the smiles of others who loved you and would help to take care of you. But now that you had come into this new world, you were tired and you slept. Maybe you dreamed about the snug, quiet place where your life began. Maybe you dreamed of the gentle rocking of that watery sack and the steady beat of your mother's heart. And maybe you dreamed of God, who so very long ago had dreamed of you. The end. I love this book. I'm so glad I shared it with you. And I'm so excited. If you like this book, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks.